constitution and MFM's danger man, Sikiro Latubosu, is the player that's going to come in. And Mataya Samuel, jagged midfielder, who's been able to pull in his weight around here, is the player that's coming out, not to the surprise of many. He's not had the best of games. However, he's contributed his bit, as we see Sikiro Latubosu, a nifty left-footed attacker taking his place. But that man you're seeing there, the Nigerian substitute on Latubosu, was voted as the man who scored the best goal in the world, believe it or not, in February 2017. A poll conducted by Cable News Network CNN. His strike against the champions, Rangers International, on a day the 1 2 1, was voted as the goal of the month for February 2016. And Casey, fortunately, fortunately, I was there to see that game live as a commentator. When the ball was given him by Steven Ode, he chipped in one moment of brilliance. Eti Match was Rangers' captain. And in a ball, he sent the ball to the opposite direction. Goalkeeper, he told the Rangers goal did not even move. That's how deft and how skillful this player is. We'll get to see some of that here today. As if I find the spirit of fair play, gives the ball back to the Lecuel, as they call them, in Benin Republic. And that was uh, actually that goal uh, by uh, Olato Boso was actually a spectacular one. On that day, this man was coach of Rangers, I remember Mapakabo. Long left the flying antelopes now as uh, fast, you know. That's so good was that goal that when Bobby scored a goal, a consolation goal for Rangers, beautiful goal, it wasn't counted. I mean, as in beauty, because of the ma how marvelous that by Olatu Boson was. It was a day of marvelous goals. As they say, there is beauty and there is beauty. That was uh, stylishly knocked into touch by Ifani Ifani. Nigeria's past victims in qualification for this competition have been Cote d'Ivoire in, in 2013 and Burkina Faso in 2015. This is 2017. Abene going to be Nigeria's latest qualifying victims. Nigeria now looking like an opportunity. This is a straight route of goal for the substitute of Latu Bosu, but uh, the pace was a bit too much. And the defender, he is very angry. Nabil Yaru, his man had a slip there. And uh, he said, Well, you should have covered me. That should never have happened. Nigeria. Looking for that uh, third goal and uh, great movement cut short there eventually by Yaru. Yaru has really done a great job at the back for the squirrels. That's <laughs> safety first. It is as far as uh, Rodriguez Fasino is concerned. Didn't want to mess around with a duo in two. And he should do that because we've just had a lot of person enter. A lot of person fits on short, quick passes. Now that's it, not if you want a return. That is, what, that is how he plays his game. And should you blink, you just put the ball behind you. But that's uh, what a lot of person can bring. The Nigerian move breaks down. A free kick to Bennett. That's because uh, Chabel Gomez and uh, Ibrahim Ogolola. We are both fouled in quick succession. Now, Chima Akas, it was, who unprofessionally did that. That was against Chabel Gomez. Nabi Yaro has really done a marvelous job at the back there. And this time around, he tries to put uh, Gomez in a forward position. Gomez can't see any yellow shirts, but this time he does see a chance there. And uh, that needed to be saved. Well, it is a penalty. A penalty to Benin Republic. The fans here are in shock, but uh, we'd love to see what uh, referee Joaquin Esono has seen. Exactly what we were talking about earlier, about the importance of getting a third goal for Nigeria. Eze has his hands on his head. You can see here, there didn't look to be much happening. That was what happened. Eze was the final effort, but it had come off the hands of Stephen Aze. It does look harsh. I've seen them giving though. Yeah, I've seen them giving. I've seen the Noah fans. They are up in numbers. Well, the uh, Sangoma here seem to have his hands tied and spot on. 
But then he's wanting to consider a penalty, he's wanting to play a penalty in order to convert it. Sivinese is not a happy man this moment. Let's well, see what the outcome will be. The big problem here for Nigeria, they, they did lose the first leg match uh, with uh, a goal scored in the second half by Sebo Mama. And now they've got to defend another penalty. And uh, believe you me, I think Sebo Mama will be relishing another attempt to strike this one again beyond Ikechukwe Zenwa. L look at it from the reverse angle. Well, I think um, uh, that leaves no one in any doubt. Maybe a trailing hand, maybe you can't cut off the hand. Like I said, it may look harsh to some, particularly the fans here. I've also seen them given. Yeah, it's a penalty. He didn't fold his hands behind his body. But that hand was flailing, and when the ball hit it, I mean, it's, it's, somewhat, it's justified. It's part of the learning curve for Steven Eze. Next time, you wrap your hands around your body. In uh, Kotonu last weekend, it was the impressive Afiz Aremu who gave away uh, a penalty with a minute left. And today is the impressive Steven Eze who's given away a penalty. Uh, though uh, just uh, past the hour mark. After consultations, it is Ikechukwe Zenwa once again against uh, the same man who scored against him last weekend, Sebu Mama. This is the battle of wits. Nigeria's number one against the uh, Benin Republic's number eight. Who wins the battle? He does uh, the eye job. A short run up between me. And that was a fantastic save by Ezra. He talks Benin Republic and keeps Nigeria firmly on the route to Kenya 2018 Championship for African Nations. His hands on heads time for Benin Republic and their coach Omar Tomoko, the fans here absolutely elated, a superb save, ball struck low, and great, great coming up the line if you are a K2 Western 1, superb save. Not surprised, I've seen this lad perform heroics on this pitch as goalkeeper for Sunshine Stars against the Canoe Pillars, and this time around, I see him wonderfully punching this ball out. The point about it was he stood on his line till the very last moment, and he saved all of that. But why the referee seem to be giving him a word about all of this, I seem not to understand. It's a corner kick for the Benoit, but wonderful save by a captain who's led by example here today. But that's actually, uh, and Nigeria is trying to effect a change of your view. The Nigerians are trying to make reinforcements before this corner is taken, at least to break the rhythm of uh, the attacks by uh, the Benino, and that uh, I think is a good uh, substitution because this man has been on a yellow card, has been involved in a couple of niggly challenges in this second half. Ifani, Ifani, he will be replaced by Rafael Ayagwa from Lobby Stars. Now, I think this change is spot on. Ifani has been able to contribute his bit, he's on a yellow, so to play safe, Ifani has had to go out. Let's see the workman like Rafael Ayagwa take his place. Ball heaved into the Nigerian 18 yard box, but header. Knocking it out of the danger zone. I wonder why the referee is Sono. Who is he going to book now? He books uh, Al Hassan Ibrahim. To the house of Drisian from uh, the stands. Well, the offense here is that uh, after he'd blown that whistle, Moazam kicked the ball out forcefully. So he felt that was insubordination, and that shouldn't be gross indiscipline. And for that, Al Hassan Moazam has walked his way into the referee's bad books. Uh, that's uh, for petulance, no less. A duo. This time, getting uh, the throw. He really is a very, uh, you know, a fast-thinking footballer at Kingsley Eduo. Um, he may not be doing so well in making passes and assists, but he really does very, very well when he is in a forward position. He, he really does know how to keep defenders on their toes. This is Rabiu Ali. Uh, he may have done too much, but he manages to get the ball to Ode, whose pass is not the very best, and Bene come away with the ball. They just can't hang on to it for any appreciable length of time. Ekas of space here to work with for Rabiu Ali. Mwazam just booked. 
Switching to the edge of the box. It is a lot of muscle. A chance for a strike there. Ball bubbling around eventually. They hook it away from danger. It's really been a frenetic game at times here. And superb back heel. A lot of also again, that is not the best chip in the box from the Nigeria substitute. Sable Mama still feeling the effects of that missed penalty. Coming backwards and to do a great job. I like the pressure that the Eagles have been to put on the Squirrels. While we witness another substitution, we have seen the last of Waris Aboki. Aboki Wari is having to leave the pitch at this time. And taking his place will be Kola Raimi. Let's see the contribution of this player with more like a Nigerian name, Kola Raimi. Uh, it reminds me of their team of 2004. They had Jonas Oketola, yeah. who did play for Enyimba and later Kwara United. And we have a Muri Agumbi, both players who played their league games in Nigeria that played for the Benin national team. And Nigeria has got themselves a corner kick. Three corners apiece for the two teams uh, in the 70th minute. It's Osaso Koro to drive this one. A better delivery to the edge of the box. Olatubosu's head is there. The goalkeeper comes and can't get there. And uh, oh, that was almost smuggled in on the line. But uh, goalkeeper Steve Glodinon eventually getting back uh, to save. And this is an um, and is a chance for Bene. The player went down in the box. Just not uh, completely gone. Eventually, it's cleared. Nigeria living very dangerously indeed. Ball crossed back to the 18-yard box. Bene keeps up the pressure. They believe they can get something in this game, but eventually Nigeria comes away with it, and this is their chance for the break. Bene have committed too many players forward. Nigeria now down the right. That is uh, Ode. Got into the 18-yard box. The chance is still kept alive there. Nobody to pick up the pieces. And that was a strike still on the front side, letting eventually. That was very, very close indeed for Nigeria. So many opportunities in just one attack, and all were fluffed. And I think Stephen Ode may have caught an injury. Stephen Ode had this. He tried to weave his hair and powerfully get in, but then he couldn't trip the ball past goalkeeper Steve Godinon. Now this Olatu Bosu with an opportunity. He was waiting for a teammate perhaps to spin him. He hit a shot, but an offside position Ode touched it the second time. Picked up an outside position as the jubilant fans of the Eagles are just waving and having the time of their lives. However, they could do with another goal, which I will consider an insurance goal. Nigeria professional football league top scorer, Steven Ode, down with an injury. The fans here pensive. They understand the mathematics surrounding this second leg final round qualifier. Right now, it's Nigeria who will be heading to the Championship for African Nations, vantage positions all around the stadium for different categories of non paying fans this time around. You cannot accuse them of having broken any law. <laughs> Not at all. Best I view, they cho they've chosen to have had from your house, positioned very close to this, an advantage of living as you see the VIP box. And amongst there, you just saw the Gennot Raw, Super Eagles coach. At halftime, he did go down to give a pep talk to the Super Eagles. But Nigeria actually does have uh, a massive World Cup qualifier against Cameroon coming up in Uyo on the 1st of September. And, uh, well, Gennot Raw will be looking at uh, this cast right in his front to check if anyone will be able to make the court for that all-important game. Victory in that game in, for Nigeria, absolutely important, just like this one. As we see Osa Sokoro, he was bundled at ground. He's a very tough lad, very experienced. He thought he had the ball and was about to go, but he was hurried to the ground there by Chabel Gomez. An elbow was donated on his head. <laughs> Yeah, as if you would want that sort of donation, Mike. But the Nigerian uh, supporters club, they don't really uh, mind uh, what they are seeing here, giving them a whole lot of joy. As it is, they will be headed to Kenya as well in just five short months. Or a duo, crowded out by yellow shirts, and the ball is cleared eventually. 
They try to go route one. But it's Emmanuel Ariwa. He has really played very well today. Alongside uh, the emergency centre back partner, Stephen Aze. Omar Chobogo must be wondering how could uh, we have uh, got that penalty and not put it away. It does happen in this game of football. E.K. Tukwe Zenwa was thinking of how he sh could be beaten in two separate legs of one qualifier by the same player and he came up tops. Free kick to Nigeria. A fast learner has shown himself to be, he got beaten. What about this for skill from Al Hassan Ibrahim, the man they call Mwazam? A wonderful player he is. Sublime ball, sublime first touch he has. And he's been able to exemplify the only few players from this that might make it when the big boys come around. Tried as he did, the Alatu Bosun couldn't keep that ball into control as it goes out for a goal kick. The MFM Maxman got a sharp left foot, a very good boss when it comes to pace. The Frenchman will call that vitesse. While uh, a duo uh, means trying to look up to Sam. And you need both of these if you're a very diligent attacker, the one that contributes goals to your team. Some of the qualities we've been able to see here today, however, the goals could short do with another goal. Absolutely. As Nigeria hacks one away. Nigeria just have uh, about a quarter of an hour to hang on to the current lead they have to enable them to qualify for the championship for African nations. Substitution, Rangers international forward Ifanyi George will come out to take the place of the injured Stephen Ode, who's not been able to overcome that calf injury he suffered about uh, five minutes ago. As the referee notices an infringement inside the Nigerian box and uh, gives the Super Eagles a free kick. Ode doing the rounds on the bench. Young player. Double figures last season. 18 goals this season. Four matches to break in front of those 23 goal record. May not look likely, but uh, this is a real breakout season for him. Not been a bad season for the young lad. Who is not done too badly here today? But then he's giving way to Ifan in George, a player that has exploded, especially in the second stanza of the league this season. The referee's whistle has gone. Just before that shot, that otherwise would just have been another goal. That was a wonderful shot there, taken by Rabiu. But then the referee's whistle went way before that. As we see Ifan in George's contribution, very prolific lad. Last season was in the books of Ayimba, but traced his way to Rangers International where he scored some crucial goals, especially from the second stanza of this season's league. Let's see what Ifanyi George can produce. Uh, he has got a bit of pace on him, and uh, he knows the route to go. Degnan Kopo has really been uh, restricted in, in uh, this second half. Well, that was a, a slip that could have been costly for the Squirrels, but they recovered just in time. That was uh, Yaru Nabil, who's done a great job for them. But that looks uh, thought uh, Rabi Ali was uh, going to latch onto that. Fasino. Yaru. Yaru kicked that one off uh, the substitute, George. Fasino with the throw, quite a long heave. And uh, in return, a powerful header out by Ariwa Chuku. The man cut offside was Koko. Well, the referee allowed Koko to get very close, almost touch the ball before he raised his flag. As it is done, because he wouldn't be considered in an outside position until he eventually gets into play. Three offsides on the part of Nigeria, and just this by Koko for the public of Benin. Three to one as an offside. That's the measure of the pressure so far. But then the Benin in the last three minutes have had some possession, beginning to show hunger and purpose there. I don't know how much time they've got uh, to get a goal. Uh, that's uh, a very painful one, really, into the back of the head by George. He's not afraid of getting stuck in. Well, that uh, was dangerous, really. No matter both, player, both players went up to tell themselves, Nabil Yero as well as Ifanyo Wiko George. But then referee felt Ifanyo was the guilty party. 
that replay really did look like uh, the referee was right. Rabi Ali knocking it into touch. He may have been uh, below par in the first leg, but certainly he's uh, played a huge part in uh, the lead here today. Yeah, his experience has really come to play. But then they could translate some of that and their dominance into goals. I think what these players need is uh, they, they just need more games uh, because you see the moves here. At times they get it right, at times they don't. So consistency, you know, in playing these sort of top quality games will really put them at the level uh, where they want to be. I agree with you. Soon after the first leg, the Benenoa team was able to play two matches. And of course, they were high scoring matches. Some authorities felt uh, that was a, a moral booster for them as Eagles could only defeat Kondo Pillars by a long goal, converted by Steven Ode, while they have been not counterpart, played more than a game. But all of that had turned out to be just match practice. And the Eagles have been able to show that they are one friendly game has so far been enough after 79 minutes here today. Well, let's uh, see if uh, it will be enough right to the end. Mama Bayere, another who's uh, tried to do a yeoman's uh, job at the back there, not quite succeeded because uh, their defense line had been breached on two occasions. Two goals of top quality from Rabi Ali in the 22nd and kicks the duo after 42nd, but seven minutes and uh, that header had to come. Else, either of a duo or if I George were waiting to pick up the pieces, again, it's Nabil Yaro. Yeah, Nabil just need that in the ball. But a duo was waiting for that pull out. Well set out. But then it shows how alert Nabil Yaro has been, how important he's been to this team. Well, it's Nakahad, I can tell you. <laughs> you see him uh, struggling for air there. The run of a duo, superb. Not only a duo was there, Alassane Mwazam was also there. That shows the hunger in these players to perhaps get the, the backbreaker, so to say. This is Nigeria's fourth corner. The previous three come to naught. Again, it's Osaso Kuro. Great one, players climbing in the box there. A chance to make it three. Yes, it is. But uh, the flag is up. It's the substitute, Alatubosu. Flag is up. And uh, celebrations. That started on the Nigerian bench and uh, was transmitted right around the stadium. Died down uh, in disappointment. And that celebration was raised by Dele Ajibo in goal, as we see it yet again. Now, as at this moment, won the ball there. He wasn't, uh, Kingsley wasn't an offside position, but referee felt. But I, I thought it was questionable. I thought this was a questionable decision. Olatu Bosun was not up, but then the second referee, AR2, felt he was in an offside position. And of course, it's his authority to do that. Else. One uh, talking point for the Nigerians, if anything uh, to what is to, ha was to happen uh, in this last uh, 10 minutes, barring time to be added at the end of the 90. Nigeria, I believe they could have scored a third, which would have put them out of sight. They still might here. It's uh, Olatubos weaving his way in, and that strike, deflection. They're keeping up the pressure here. Rabiu Ali. Adored by the fans here. That strike was headed for Steve uh, Glodjanon's uh, post, but the head of Mama Bayere puts it over the top, and Nigeria has uh, another corner. The last one led to a ball that ended in the back of the net. Illegally, according to the officials, could this one be it? Well, let's see if this might just be the Osasu Koro goes for it. But I love the technique on the part of Rabiu there. His non-kicking leg was by the ball and he let fly. That would have just zoomed into the net. But then, Bahiru's head took it off for a corner kick. The Bidinoa players looking scared out of their wits. They are tired from the relentless Nigerian pressure and they have to defend this set piece. It's a nightmare scenario for them. Uh, but lucky the squirrels, not the best de delivery from uh, Osas Okoro. Animated uh, Nigerian bench. As a duo talks out of turn. Claiming there was a high boot there. They had better answer Mr. Esono. That's the spirit, Kingsley. 17 fouls committed by Nigeria. Now, that's uh, a problem. I think uh, the, the 
the coaches have to work on. Nigeria is, has controlled this game from start till this moment, and yet they've considered seven fouls more. So that uh, smacks of indiscipline. I think the coaches uh, need to work on that. Now you, you, you're quite right statistically, but then most of those fouls, the players have been complaining, just like Hicks complained a short while ago, that it really wasn't against him. Well put, and I saw off camera, you saw the coach Imama telling him, no, take it easy, cool your temper, as Chomogo seemed to do the same thing. Chomogo has been able to keep his physique, just like when he stopped playing. It takes a lot of discipline for ex-footballers to do that. Not many can do that. But I'll tell you the likes of Friday Lao, Friday Ekwa, and the rest of the Agali are still the way they are. Chomogo, the Squirrels coach today, played in the best Squirrel teams of all time that reached their first Nations Cup in Tunisia in 2004. And uh, in 2008, in Ghana, Nigeria, the only two times they have played in the Africa Cup of Nations. Confusion. They want to leave the free kick for the goalkeeper, Ike Chukwe Zenwa. Yes, I think uh, that was needless from the Nigerians. That's time wasting and uh, it, it's really sad. But then the Kongo should have gone behind. He didn't give the allowed allowance, so to say. As he was telling him, listen, you need to give me the needed allowance. But he didn't give. I expected Ruffy to have given Kobo. Now Imama is leaving, especially with Ezinwa. Because in the first place, Ezinwa had no right to come take that free kick. Absolutely. He just uh, picked up a needless booking, if you ask me. And uh, that looked like players are going down uh, on the penalty box there. A duo stays down. The referee has got to go over to see exactly. It seems he's got uh, cramp. Now there was his duo making a nuisance of himself alongside Ifian in George. But Yero, who is your man in this defense, simply refused to let go on that occasion. And before the ball settled down, the goalkeeper had quickly booted that. Referee called back for a retake as Kingsley Duo goes down. Perhaps a cramp and it's been treated on the pitch. That might chop a few seconds of the air time. Well, I don't think he's play acting actually. He also seems to have a cut on his knee. Uh, maybe um, slid on a rough patch of a synthetic tough. He's been let out. Nigeria said three changes have been completed. I know that guy cannot roar if uh, he's looking uh, to pick someone from this team. A duo definitely on the strength of today's performance may be one of those candidates and he wouldn't like to see the player go off injured. A duo is built like a tank. You'll survive this and even more. I'm sure he'll last the remaining five minutes or thereabout they have in this encounter. Uh, that's a blatant uh, push from uh, Fashino. And yet no card. And yet no card from that. That's what I've been saying. The Benona seem to have been a lot more lucky as regards decisions in this game. That's why when the statistics rolled out 17 in their favor, uh, against 10 in Nigeria's favor, I felt it was somewhat unjust. Uh, Dengnon Kokpo, the man dishing out the wrong, uh, I mean, the harsh stuff. I mean, that was a blatant elbow into the back. Should have been a booking, if you ask me. So, with just uh, four crucial minutes left here, it is Nigeria 2, Benin Republic nil. Uh, the game is flowing towards the right uh, side of the field, if you're a Nigerian fan, because they want that ball in that Beninoa half. Well, this is where teams need staying power. You need a lot of experience and concentration to last the remaining three minutes or thereabout of this game. And I'm sure we've got quite a few experienced lads on the pitch, especially in the defense line of the Super Eagles. Osas was there two years ago during the finals of the tournament. Ezinwa has always been there and there, he's played with the Super Eagles. And Chima Akas was captain two years ago in a, an allocation. We had Chikatara shown like a million and one stars, Casey. Yes, of course, uh, Chisom Chikatara, who plays for Widat Casablanca of Morocco, was one of the top scorers at the last uh, championship for African nations in Rwanda where he finished with score four goals, including a hat-trick against the Nigeria Republic. His other strike 
came against Tunisia. Nigeria's 1 0 loss to Guinea, though, put paid to the aspirations and they crashed out at the group stage. In 2014, Nigeria finished third. The big guns in African football yet to leave their mark on the Championship for African Nations, the opening edition.